Hello everyone, welcome back to my FB Live, the hour before midnight basic accounting. I'm Kong Chat. Today, let us explore some characteristics of a Singapore shares uh, in a Singapore company. Yeah. And um, in uh, Singapore, um, basically when sh shares are typically known uh, as share capital in a company. Yep. So share capital is basically the money invested in a company by, share, by the shareholders and the share capital is actually a long-term uh, source of finance. So in return for the investment in the share capital, shareholders actually gain a share of the ownership in the particular company. Right? So uh, shares are known as share capital in the company. So what are the few characteristics in the, of a share capital? Now, Singapore law requires all companies to uh, maintain share capital throughout the life of the company. All right. Now, in Singapore, um, you only need a minimum of one dollar to actually incorporate a company, and um, private limited companies must have a minimum of one shareholder, uh, and can have a maximum of 50, 50 shareholders. Okay, that is private limited companies. Of course, when you talk about public listed companies, then there's unlimited. All right. And uh, Singapore allows a uh, one hundred percent of a uh, local or foreign shareholding. All right. So um, in, whereas in some other countries, they may not allow 100% shareholdings uh, of a foreigner. For example, in Thailand, I think the maximum they allow is only up to 49%. All right. Yeah, but in Singapore, it allows 100% local or foreign shareholding. Okay. Now, the other thing is that the shares also can be issued in any major currencies. In other words, it can be in Singapore dollars, it can be in USD, it can be in renminbi or whichever currency that you deem fit for the company. Okay. And companies are free to issue shares at any time as long as there's approval from the pool of the shareholders all right, in the company. And the, and the other characteristic that the shares are actually, they are freely transferred between shareholders. All right. Uh, unless there's a restriction in the company constitution or in the uh, articles of association of the company, otherwise it's actually free. Uh, you can actually freely freely transfer your shares to anyone. All right, at any point of time. Yep. And um, the few common types of uh, shares uh, in in a, in a company is um, uh, in Singapore. Company law, it allows company to create share types that offer uh, different privileges and rights to the shareholders. Okay, so the most common types of a share issued by Singapore companies are number one, they are ordinary shares, which means that the, all companies are required to issue uh, one share in order to incorporate a company. And then typically this ordinary share that they issue, they actually have uh, offer a voting right, all right, to of one vote. Uh, as general meetings. So if you issue one share, there's one vote. All right. If you issue 10 shares, there's 10 votes. So depending who owns the share. All right. And also the, the ordinary shares have the right to dividends when it's being declared by the company. All right. And, uh, and also have the rights to claim the remaining assets when the company is wound up. That is the characteristic of ordinary shares. All right. Now, um, in terms of the other type of shares, it's actually there's also such thing called a non-voting shares. All right, a non-voting shares is unlike uh, ordinary shares. They are non-vote uh, non-voting shares uh, do not give the shareholder the rights to uh, vote in a general meeting, so they have no voting rights. All right, and these typically are being issued to employees or the main shareholders' family members. All right, so this is what they call non-voting shares. And the other uh, types of sharehold shares is basically the preference shares. All right, preference shares. So preference shares, preference shares in general, uh, uh, preference shares actually give a actually in general they are have a special rights over ordinary shares. They have a special rights with respect to dividend payments. Okay, uh, for example, a company may choose to issue dividends preference shares to preference shareholders first before issuing to the ordinary shareholders. That's why they're called the preference shares. All right. So uh, those who hold a preference shares, typically they have the rights to, uh, to the dividends first before the remaining balance can be issued to the ordinary shares. And uh, the, uh, 
the other other characteristics of our preference shares is also that um, they may have a right to claim the access of the company uh, over the ordinary shares, which means have a, a preferred right, all right, than the ordinary shareholders. And uh, in most, but however, in most cases, preference shares they don't have any non, they basically they are non-voting rights. Basically, they cannot vote in a in a in a uh, general meeting, all right. Uh, they have preference to certain things, but they are not able to vote in a way, okay? Yep. So and the 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 other sh type of shares is called a redeemable redeemable shares. Normally, a redeemable shares uh, is issued with the condition that the company will buy back the shares at a future date, okay? So one advantage of uh, issuing redeemable shares is that it gives a company flexibility um, to actually buy back the shares at a later date. Because uh, companies can also sometimes buy and sell stocks like investors, all right, uh, for certain strategic reasons why they are issuing a redeemable shares. And of course, um, the next type of shares, they also have called it a redeemable preference shares. Basically, just now we have explained about the re redeemable shares, the characteristic of it, and what is preference shares. So a combination of redeemable preference shares is basically the, all the characteristics within that are uh, included. Okay, so and redeemable, redeemable preference shares are issued on the terms that shareholders will at a future date uh, be repaid of the amount they invest in the company. All right, so typically that is the case. And now, uh, how about uh, redeemable versus non redeemable shares? Okay, redeemable, redeemable preference shares are shares which a company can redeem, and non redeemable preference shares are therefore generally better for the shareholder because they are non-redeemable, which means a company cannot redeem the shares as and when they want. Okay, so the shareholders on a non-redeemable preference shares will be more secure in a way. However, it's still possible that such non-redeemable shares be subjected to buyback provisions at a later stage has set out in a company's shareholders agreement. So it's on a case-to-case -case basis. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, that's all I have for you today. So thank you all again for watching, and um, please continue continue with a lifelong learning because power is in your knowledge. Goodbye and good night, everyone. Bye bye.